Let's rise and face Jerusalem. Men of Israel, blow trumpets. Trumpets down. O Heavenly Father, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we humbly come before thee, dear Lord, as thy servants, asking for your mercy and forgiveness of our sins and the sins of our forefathers. Dear Lord, we ask you to let your word go out into the earth, dear Lord. Give your people the spirit to hear and your prophets a word to speak, that they may hear and repent and come back to thy law, statutes, and commandments with faith in thy Son. We pray for your protection as we travel. We pray for mercy upon our families, all the children of Israel, dear Lord. We ask for a special blessing upon Israel united in Christ, our leaders and their families, dear Lord. Keep them protected. Keep them full of your wisdom and understanding that they may continue to teach thus babes in the spirit of your son, Jesus the Christ. We ask you to bless our food and our drink and all things we glorify thee. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sons of God. Patient saints, sons of God, hand salute, salute down, face sisters, to the honorable daughters of Sarah, we say shalom. Hey, shalom Israel, most high in Christ, bless you all. Uh, yeah, I'm going to need two readers, I, I apologize Eastern Standard, Central Time. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking, man. <laughs> but anyway, uh, today's class is entitled Forgiveness and Reconciliation. All right? Uh, I want to begin in the book of Matthews, chapter 12. Who's going to read for me? Get a lie? Okay, Matthews 12. Yes, sir. And let's start with verse 31. Yes, sir. The book of Matthew, chapter 12 and verse 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Read on. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. So now watch this. It says... Wherefore all men, it says, verse 31, Wherefore I say unto you, all men of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto all men. But blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. So what is blasphemy against the Holy Ghost that cannot be forgiven? If it just says blasphemy can be forgiven. I'm going to read on real quick. Uh, verse 32, Whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him neither in this world or the world to come. So we have to identify the difference between blasphemy and blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. All right? Uh, let's go from there real quick um, to 1 Timothy's. Hold this. We're going to keep on coming right back here. 1 Timothy's chapter 1, and I want verse 12. Yes, sir. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who have enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and, in, and injurious. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly. Now, look, Paul said he thanked God or he thanked Christ Jesus, who has enabled me and had counted me faithful, putting me into this into the ministry who was before a blasphemer. Paul said he was a blasphemer. It says, and a persecutor, and injurious, but he obtained mercy or forgiveness because he did it ignorantly and in unbelief. His unbelief was he didn't believe on Christ. Now, Paul knew the scriptures, but he still was not, he still didn't, uh, Christ wasn't revealed to him while he was doing this. Uh, let's read that real quick. Uh, I want you to go back to Matthews 12. Give me another reader. Give me Acts 8 and 1 and 9 and 1. So get a lie, stay, go back to Matthews and stay there. Yes, sir. You want to read Matthew uh, 12, 31 again? No, I want them to read uh, okay. 8 and 1. Acts chapter 8 and verse 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at the time there was a great persecution against the church. 
which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. So Paul was consented to the death of Stephen when you read the chapter before. And they killed Stephen. Now watch this. This is what he said. He was an injurious person. Go to 9 and 1. Acts chapter 9 and verse 1. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that, that if he found any of this way, whether they be men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. So Paul didn't care if there was men or women. He breathed out threatens and slaughter. You know what that means? He was about, I'll kill you if I have to. Man or woman. All right? So Paul referred to himself as a blasphemer. He spoke against these scriptures, spoke against what Christ's mission was, was to raise the 12 tribes of Israel, right? Now watch this. I want to jump on down uh, to 9, verse 13. Acts chapter 9 and verse 13. Then Ananias answered, answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. He's referring to Paul. Ananias heard all the evil that Paul did in Jerusalem. Read on. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. And he hath authority to go take them into prison. Read on. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. Look what he told Ananias. He said, Go thy way, for he, being Paul, is a chosen vessel unto me. Read on. To bear my name before the Gentiles. His job is that he's going to have to bear Christ's name before the Gentiles. Read on. And kings. And kings. And the children of Israel. And the children of Israel. Read on. Verse 16. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Look what he said. He said, listen up, Ananias. Paul is going to have to suffer great things for my name's sake. So Paul was forgiven because we read it in Timothy how Jesus Christ, uh, I'm going to read again. I thank Christ Jesus, O Lord, who hath enabled me, for he counted me faithful, putting me into this ministry. All right, you're forgiven, but you're going to suffer great things for this gospel, for my name's sake. A lot of times what happens, we think forgiveness means you absolved of judgment. No. You could be forgiven but there's still going to be a judgment for your actions. Everything has a repercussion, good or bad. So never take in your mind that because you're forgiven, even relationships, that it's, it's going to be carte blanche, and that's where it ends at. You understand that? Paul had to suffer many things. Now watch this. I want to go to... Back to Matthews, Matthews 12. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Okay, watch this real quick. What is the Holy Ghost? John 14. So you can blaspheme and be forgiven, but you can't blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. What is the Holy Ghost? Go to uh, Ma uh, John 14, verse 15. Yes, sir. John chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he, will that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Now watch this. It's, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And if you're keeping his commandments, he said, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he, and my, he might abide with you forever. Because Christ knew the time was going to come where he's going to depart from this earth. But he said, don't worry. There's going to be a comforter left for you. Something's going to be there, or somebody's going to be there to comfort you. And he says, uh, verse what? Verse 17? 17, yes, sir. 
Verse 17. Even the spirit of truth. Indeed, the spirit of truth. And we know the truth is what? The laws of God, right? Read on. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. He said he dwells with you and shall be in you. First John, when he says I dwell, first John 2 or whatever, it says I dwell in you and you dwell in him, something like that. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Find that for me real quick. Uh, first John 2. Is, and it, is it 3? Let me hear it. That sounds like it. Okay, first John 3, verse 24. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him. And he in him, and hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. All right, that spirit is what? Him. That spirit is the laws. That spirit is the Holy Ghost. It's all the same thing. It's synonymous. Now let's go back. Verse, I want 14, 18. Yes, sir. The book of John, chapter 14 and verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So look what he says. Christ said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to come to you. How did he come to us? Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. What you're holding in your hand right now is Jesus Christ. In the word form. That's why this book has a spirit on it. It's not like a regular book. And none of you men are regular men. Or you women, you're not regular people because you understand. People mind are shut off to that. You understand what I'm saying? Understand. This book is alive. These words come to play in our lives. Now, back to the Holy Ghost. Jump on down to verse 26. Yes, sir. John chapter 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Okay, so the Comforter, which is who? Christ. Which is the Holy Ghost, which is Christ. You understand that? That's what he says in... Um, John 1, give me that real quick. Yes, sir. I'm the word made flesh. Yes, sir. John chapter 1 and verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And the word was made flesh. These words came to us in the fleshly form. He was the embodiment of all God's wisdom in this book. And then he went back to the Father and he says, I'm going to still be with you. I'm still going to be there to comfort you. Do you know for me today, you know what the comfort is in these scriptures right now? I always say it. Hands down has to be my favorite scripture. Revelations 13 and 10. He that lead into cap, that just comforts me. When I hear that, I get warm, I feel good. Oh gosh. I can never quote that scripture enough. He that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. It make me feel good. It make me say, okay, I'm comforted. I know if I just endure, like I said last week, I'll put my foot in my enemy's neck. Praise ye God. All right, good. Have one of those moments. Back to, back to John 14, 26, Bishop. No, I'm done with John. Go back to Matthew's. Yes, sir. Okay, so it says, verse 31. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all man of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. So if all man of blasphemy can be forgiven, but blasphemy against the Holy Ghost can't be forgiven, the Holy Ghost is who? Is the word, is Christ, right? So then riddle me this then. Luke 22. Luke 22, I want verse 54. Yes, sir. Luke, the book of Luke, chapter 22 and verse 54. Then they took him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he had sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, woman, I know, I know him not. So Peter denied that he knew Christ. He said, I don't know him. Read on. 
And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. Man, I'm not with him. We don't. And about the space of one hour after, another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew. So if you know the history here, or the, uh, what the history here, Christ told him, the crock will crow thrice, and you're going to deny me. So now he was put to the test, and he said, I don't know him. No, I don't know him. Three times, I don't know him. We don't. Uh, verse 61, and the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, before the cock crew, Thou, before the crop crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. He told him, I told you, Peter, you're going to deny me. Now watch this. I want to read this again in the book of Matthews. Let's go to Matthews uh, 26. Matthews chapter 26, and I want to read... Uh, 26, 35. Yes, sir. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, and verse 35. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. So Peter said, listen, Christ. He says, Though I should die with thee, yet I will not deny thee. He said, I will never deny you. What did he do? He denied Christ. Watch this. I want to go stay right there, Matthews. Jump on down to 26, verse 69. Yes, sir. Matthew 26 and verse 69. Now Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied, denied with an oath, I do not know the man. Look what he denied. He denied Christ now with an oath. He swore, I swear I don't know this man. I swear to God I don't know him. He said, I don't know him. Read on. Verse 73. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou, art all, thou also art one of them, for thy speech bereath thee. Then began he to curse and, sw and to swear, saying, I know not the man. <laughs> so Peter began to curse them out. and said, I don't know him, God. I don't know him. Christ told him, he, said, he told Christ, I'm ready to die with you. He said, yeah, sure, Peter. So you say. But what did Christ say about denying him? What, is, what does Christ say about denying him? Anybody know? Matthew's 10. Yes, sir. 1035. Matthew chapter 10, verse 35. For I have come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. What does it say he denied? Verse 32. 33, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Um, Matthew 10, verse 32. Whosoever therefore confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. So did not Peter deny Christ? So wouldn't Peter now be denied before the Father? Based on what Christ said here? Was Peter denied before the Father? Yes or no? Why? Okay, somebody answer. Talk loud. Why wasn't Peter denied? Because he repented. Very good. 
Let's go back in Luke 22, verse 61. The book, yep. of, yes, yep. sir. the book of Luke, chapter 22, and verse 61. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. He what? And wept bitterly. Peter went out and wept bitterly. He had a contrite and broken spirit because he knew what he did was wrong. That's what the give me that real quick in uh, Psalms um Yes sir. Psalms fifty a uh, fifty one. Fifty one, yes sir. Right, read that. Yes, sir. The book of Psalms, chapter fifty one and verse seventeen. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. That's what the Lord is looking for, a broken and contrite heart. So Peter wept bitterly because he knew what he did was wrong. But it didn't change that he did it, right? Was he forgiven? Of course. He said, upon this rock, Peter, I'm going to build my church. Peter was apostle, left back to do the work. Watch this. Second Peter. Now we're going to read about Peter a little bit. Second Peter. Now I know I'm racing through this because I started late. And I want to try to get through most of this. Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter 1. And I want to start with verse 10. Yes, sir. Second Peter, chapter 1, verse 10. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Wherefore, I would not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be, be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this, tab this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ hath showed me. So he understood that he had to put off this tabernacle. He knew I'm going to have to die exactly how Christ told me it's going to happen. Read on. Verse 15, moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the, from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Stop right there. So he says, I want to go back a little bit. Yes, sir. He says, moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. So Peter knew what death he was going to take on. He understood that. Paul understood too. Paul understood that he was going to his death. That's why he. That's why Ananias, when God told him he's going to suffer great things for my name's sake. But it doesn't change that judgment must pass. There's mercy, there's forgiveness, there's reconciliation, but there's also judgment, and we can never forget that. All right. So watch this. Let's go. So Peter said he got to put off this tabernacles. John thirteen. John 13, 36. Yes, sir. The book of John, chapter 13, verse 36. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither goest thou? And Jesus answered him, Whither I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. And Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. He said, I will lay down my life for thy sake. So why can't I follow you now? Read on. Jesus answered him, 
Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, the cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. So as much as Peter thought he was there, he's like, listen, Peter, you sure you know what you're asking for? He said, I, I know, Peter, you're not at that point yet. Where's that at uh, where he told, and this is Luke, where he told Peter, Satan desired to sift you as wheat? Yes, sir. What is that, like Luke? Luke? Yes, sir, Luke chapter 22. 22, Verse yeah. 31. Yes, sir, Luke chapter 22 and verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan have desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy, fa that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Look what he told him. He says, and when you are converted. He says, Satan's, Satan's after you, Peter. He says, and I pray for you. So I'm praying for you, Peter. He said, Peter, when you're converted. What is he telling Peter? You ain't right yet, Peter. You speak out the side of your head. Yeah, you ready to lay down your life for me. Peter, you're going to deny me thrice. Peter said, I swear I don't know him. F you, I don't, I don't know the man. Christ looked at him. In my mind, I'm playing out when he said that, and Christ looked at him like, I told you, Peter. No words had to be said. The conviction he had in his heart that he knew he denied Christ. And that's why he weeped bitterly. But the scripture tells us back in Mat Matthew 12, look what it says in Matthew 12. Matthew chapter 12. Verse 36. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 36. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. It says every idle word that you speak, we are going to give account of. So be mindful what comes out of your mouth, what you say. Because there's forgiveness and reconciliation, but there is judgment also. Matthew 23, 20, 23, 23. Yes, sir. And we're going to come back to um, Matthew 12 and explain it. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and, um, and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. Now listen to what he says the weightier matters of the law is. Judgment. First one is what? Judgment. He says, you pay tithes a minute anise, anise, but you omitting the weightier matters of the law. The first one is judgment. And after judgment is what? Mercy. Then is mercy. If you want order in this body, in anything, there must be judgment. You cannot avoid having a congregation or anything grow in righteousness without judgment. So you could be forgiven, but it doesn't mean judgment doesn't pass. And it's similar to what Bishop was talking about last night in marriages. You know, a woman fornicate against her husband. Oh, she could be forgiven, but judgment still got to pass. It's over. Get right with God. Without judgment, there's disorder. So read it again. Yes, sir. Matthew 23, verse 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye, have to, ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. And he said, these you ought to have done and don't leave the others undone. God is a God of judgment. Again, there is reconciliation. There is forgiveness. But let's don't forget there is judgment. Don't forget that point of it. A lot of times we want to get past the judgment. Lord, just forgive me, your brother. Just forgive me. Okay, man. Cool, we cool. Yeah, no, but no, no, no. That's that Christian mind. That's a Christian mind. Now watch this real quick. Deacon? And most high Christ prayers. Uh, captains, if any of you want to join in, you can feel free. I want to go back to Matthew 12, and I want to explain this whole thing. Now watch this. We've been reading verses 31 and 32, right? Yes, sir. But I want to jump up a little higher. Let's read verse 20, the devil's, let's start with 29. 
Yes, sir. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 29. Or else. How no, I don't want to start there. Let's start high. Start with 27. Okay. Yes, sir. Matthew 12, verse 27. And if I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. He said, if you try to say I'm the devil, and that's how I cast out devils, then whom children are you? Read on. Verse 28. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. You know, you can't cast out devils with devils. You can't crash out. You can't cast uh, cast out Christianity with Catholicism. You understand? So he's saying, but if I cast out dev devils by the Spirit of God, he says, what? Then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Then you go understand the kingdom of God has come unto you. That's our job. Our job is to cast the devils out of all people. Now watch what it says. Read the next verse. Verse 29. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? Now try, think of this analogy. Well, let me ask you a question. What do you think he's saying there? What are you, brothers, right? What do you think he's saying there? Who wants to give a shot at it? Nobody? Okay, is this a hospice? Nope, nope. Can we read it again? Yeah, shalom, read it again. Leadership. Hey, Shalom. Read it again. Yes, sir. Matthew 12, 29. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? So what I'm asking you is ex just explain it for what it, how you read it. You don't have to get deep. Yes, sir. So it says, or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house? So if, if there's a strong man or if there's a strong spirit, you have to, you, his goods is going to get spoiled. So it says, except ye first bind up the strong man. So you have to take care of that strong man first. So then you'll be able to save whatever goods that, that you could salvage. Okay, very good. So in layman's terms, just on the s surface. Oh, right here. Basically, it's for, uh, talking about destroying his mind. First, you have to get his mind changed, and that way, uh, things can enter, filthy things can enter into his mind. Okay, how, how, do you, how do you get his mind changed? You bind him up. It can be through doctrines, things of this world that convince you that, hey, uh, Christ is right. You can do, Christ is white. You can do whatever you want to, do as thy will. And then those spirits, those demons enter into you because you just bound them up. He was supposed to be a strong man, supposed to be a big, strong family man. But then, you know, they come in with these doctrines and they change them and mess him up. Then you got to go and. Okay, you, you, you on it. You on it. You on it. Right. So I'm going to get to layman's term. Ain't no way you're going to break into Captain Hoshia's house and rob it until you, unless you tie him up first. You got, you got to tie him up first. It's just going to happen. There you go. <laughs> You know, you, you, yeah. There's no way you're gonna break. It. You know you ain't gonna break it. Sidebar. You know Deacon. I'm always taking a jab at him. And one time I went to Deacon Alvio's house. I, I, you know, you know I'm gonna do it. And I went to his front door. And before I got inside, I just saw his shoes, and them things were so big. I suddenly say that is a that that is a deterrent, right there. You know, you don't even need an alarm system. You see, it's like size 18 feet. I'm like, who's fit? Which giant lips in here? You know, that's what you got to do, put your shoes on the front door, outside. Ain't nobody breaking into that house. Nah, it ain't even worth it. Let's go to the other house. We need like a size eight shoe. Anyway, say anyway. You have to bind them first. Proverbs 5. Here's how you bind them. 522, right? Yes, sir. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 22. His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself. And he shall be holden with the cords of his sins. That's how you bind a strong man. He got to be taken in his sins. So you was right on. You was on it. Both of you was on it. You got to get him caught up in his sins. Bind him in that. That strong man. Watch this. Ephesians. Be strong in the Lord. Read that again. Yes, sir. Uh, Ephesians. Six. And what verse? I'm trying to remember the verse. No, no, don't, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Yes, sir. I forgot it. Just go. <laughs> yes, sir. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. His what? His might. Let's read on. But on the, put on the whole armor of God, 
that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on all the commandments of God that you can be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. One of his tricks is try to bind you. And you're right here. Bind you in your sin. Let your sins weigh you down. Read on. Yes, sir. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah, this battle is spiritual wickedness in high places. This whole place, this whole vibration is evil. And we have to have the spiritual eye to see all these pitfalls that's here to bind us. Because some of us, we'll get, like, you know, oh, oh, a bind may not be drugs. Like, I'm good. I don't need, I'm, I'm, I'm past that. I don't need that in my life. But it might be women. It might not be women. Your, your distraction might be what? Hatred. Wrath. Unforgiving. You understand? So spiritually, you've got to be able to discern and have a spiritual eye to see all those things out there that's there to bind us, politics, religions, pick one, whatever, and make sure you avoid that. Because many of our people get bound to their sins, and you wonder why they bug out, because they're plagued right here. So let's go back to Matthews real quick. Well, verse 29 one more time. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 12, verse 29. Or else... How can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? Then you got free reign of destroying him. Get his mind caught up. Read on. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. So God, Christ made it clear, if you're not with this mission to gather the 12 tribes of Israel, you're against him. That was Peter. I mean, that was Paul. He was trying to stop the 12 tribes of Israel rising up again. And that's why on the road to Damascus, he said, Saul, Saul, why kick, us, why kick us against the pricks? What was he telling him? Hey, Paul, you're going to hurt yourself. I'm sorry, God. Oh, no, you're forgiven. But you got to suffer many things for my name's sake now. It's cool. But you don't go unscathed. Everybody understand that? Let's read on. Yes, sir. Verse 31. Matthew 12, verse 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against <coughs> the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. <coughs> Peter did. Paul did. Read on. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall, not, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Now it says if you speak against the Holy Ghost, it will not be forgiven you in this world or the world to come. <coughs> Give me that in Revelations, please. Uh, Revelation 16. <clears throat> this is where you can't repent. This is where you can't be saved. This is where it says, uh, blaspheme against the Holy Spirit should not be forgiven. Yes, 16. Sir. Verse 9, Bishop? Yeah, please. Yes, sir. Start with verse 7. <clears throat> yes, sir. Revelation 16, verse 7. And I heard another out of the altar say, even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon, upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat. And blaspheme the name of God. Even but, in, listen, hold on. Even in judgment, they blaspheme the name of God. They're getting, you know, that's Israel. Remember he told um, Ezekiel that? He said, this is a, this is a uh, stiff-necked and rebellious people. Try to wrap your mind around it. Isaiah was warning us. Judgment came in the time of Jeremiah. Ezekiel, now we're in Babylon. So we done ate all young, starved to death, killed each other, died of diseases. We make it to Babylon, and we still would not repent. And God, once again, he sent Ezekiel to them. and said, Ezekiel, I'm saying to a rebellious people. 
These people are hard-hearted. They will not hear the Lord, the law of the Lord. I know I'm butchering it, but if you know what I'm talking about. And all people still. That's why Bishop Paul yesterday in, uh, in Peter's, some people are appointed to death. Some people got to die. There's no, that's only fixed them. It's death. That was a good scripture yesterday. Some people just appointed to die. So read on. Yes, sir. Uh, Revelation chapter 16, verse 9. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which have power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. And they still, he had power over the plagues, and they still would not repent. They, black, they would not repent. That's the only time you can't be forgiven. That's the only time you can't be forgiven. It says blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, meaning you're bound in your sins and you refuse to repent. Then, give me that. that, that Where is it at? In Peter's he pulled, appointed to death? Yes, sir. Peter's too? Yes, sir. First Peter. So do you understand that blasphemy, what it means, and they repented not? That's, that, that's where you can't be forgiven. Because you refuse to repent, even in judgment. Uh, 1 Peter 2, right? Yes, sir. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 8. Um, yes. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto they also were appointed. Right. They were appointed to death. They stumble at the word. How are you stumbling? Could it be that you're bound? You're stumbling because you're bound in your sin, and you are appointed to death. So let's go back to Matthews one more time. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 32. 30. Yes, sir. Verse 32. Matthew 12, verse 32. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world Neither in the world to come. Because he would not repent. Read on. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. So, plain and simple, the tree is known by his fruits. It, what happened? Peter wept bitterly. He repented, and he went out to do the work. His fruits was indicative of who he is. That's what it says, be not deceived. I forgot what it says, but it says not be. Give me a second. <laughs> he that doeth righteousness is righteous. Yes, sir. I got you. That's James. First John 3. First John. Okay. I know it's something to drink. Yes, sir. First. But let me get. Let me go there with you. Yes, sir. Let me see if there's a thought before that. First John what? 3 and 7. Let me go there with you. First John 3, verse 7. Yes. Read it. First John chapter 3, verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. I like that scripture because it says, let no man deceive you. Don't get fooled. He that's righteous is going to do righteousness. He that's evil is going to do evil. So forget what any man tells you. Just watch them. Their actions, their fruits are going to bear who they are. Read on. Verse 8. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sent it from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. We don't. And whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin, because he is born of God. And he cannot sin or will not willfully sin, because he's born of God. That's what Paul said. He said, and I did it in ignorantly. We can't have a mind where we just give ourselves over to sin without any regard, without thinking there's not a punishment behind it. We can't speak any word we want out of our mouth without thinking there's not a punishment behind it. So, yeah, you might get forgiven, but don't take that and think it means that there won't be a judgment. We're going to answer for all our actions. Watch this. Deacon, see what I'm saying? Okay, watch this. Let's go to um, Genesis. Genesis chapter 3. I want Genesis 3, 
verse 17. Yes, sir. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Verse, verse 18. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb, the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So God gave his judgment. He says, listen, Adam, because you listen to Eve, you're going to work for everything. Uh, you're going to work now until you die. That's the judgment. Read on. Verse 20. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. And unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So then in verse 22, it says, and the, Lord, and the Lord God said, Behold, this man has become one of us. He said, to know good and evil. We were never to know evil. What does it say that again? Uh, Most High made us upright and we saw that. Yes, sir. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes. 7. Yes, sir. Yeah, get that for me real quick. Yes, sir. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 28, no, 29, excuse me. Lo, this only have I found, that God have made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. God made us upright, but we sought out to be evil. So let's go back. He says, and behold, this is 322 of Genesis. And behold, God said, behold. And the Lord God said, behold, this man has become one of us to know good and evil. We were never to learn evil. We were not supposed to learn that. But look what happened. We learned it. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take hold of the tree of life and eat and live forever. What does that mean? We know good and evil. And he says, lest he take hold of the tree of life and eat and live forever. I know you know. In the back. Not you. Not you. What's wrong, leadership? Uh, we're going to Proverbs 2. Uh, Keep the commandments and live forever. So, you, so what, is he, what is he saying there? To uh, obey his voice. Obey. No, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it and you explain it again. Watch. And the Lord God said, be, said Behold, this man is become one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take hold of the tree of life and live forever. What did he say the judgment was for Adam? We just read it earlier. He's going to um, work. Right. Until he die. Right. Now he said, lest he take hold of the tree of life and eat of it and live forever. What is he saying? So might help him. Shalom again. Uh, let me read it. Because he said that he was supposed to die. And God said he'll become one of us, knowing good and evil. And with us not knowing we weren't supposed to learn evil, he'll be just like how God is, knowing good and evil. So, Okay, that's good. Now, the next one, no, no, stay right there. Then he said to them, he said, lest he take hold of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Right, because the laws is the tree of life. The okay. laws is what make you live. You're missing what I'm asking. You're missing it. Right here, right here. Uh, shalom. Uh, lest he repent. Right, and so, so what are you saying? God don't want him to repent? No, no, um, take hold of the tree of life. Um, Saying that he um, repent and turn from um, his ways. All right here.
Okay. Um, if we go on on a vein of the class, I believe it's saying that he wants him to receive the judgment for messing up. Very good. He's like, no, 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 no. Don't take hold of tree of life. No, 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 not, not, no, no, not yet. No, 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 no. You done did it. Oh, everybody want to get right. How many of you had handcuffs up? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> when the braces go on, you're like, nah, I, I, I'm going to do different this time. I, you know, I'm going to change. I'm going be, to be, be a law-abiding citizen. It, 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 handcuffs change the whole. Let me tell you, when the handcuffs hit you, boy, all reality come flooding in at that moment. You, ha you have a whole different perspective of things. God said, I don't want to hear it. Just like you got children. You love your children. You're going to forgive them. But I'm going to bust your ass right now. No, no, don't come cry. I don't want to hear it. We'll talk afterwards. But right now is judgment. You understand it? <laughs> so let's read that verse again. Yes, sir. Genesis 3.22, and the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. He said, now he want to get right after he, done, after he disobeyed me. This ain't the time for that. Read on. Verse 23, therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden. No, don't eat that tree of life. You got to go. Come out, the, come out of here. Let's, let's read about the tree of life so everybody know what I'm talking about. Um, Second Ezra chapter. I want Second Ezra 2 and 12 and 8 and 54. 2 Ezra chapter 2 and verse 12. They shall have the tree of life for an ointment of sweet savor. They shall neither, they shall neither labor nor be weary. Go and Go, and ye shall receive. Pray for a few days unto you, that they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. Watch. Right, that kingdom's already prepared for you. That tree of life is that, that tree of life is the access to that kingdom that's prepared for us, is these laws. What are the other acts for uh, 854? Yes, sir. Second Andrews 8 and verse 54. Sorrows are past, and in the end is showed the treasure of immortality. And therefore ask thou no more questions concerning the multitude of them that perish. For when they had, when they had taken liberty, they despised the Most High, thought scorn of his law, and forsake his ways. Mm -hmm. Moreover, they have trodden down, the right, trodden down his righteous. Okay, so stop right there. It says, sorrow has passed, and the end is showed the treasure of immortality. Uh, I thought it said tree here. Yes, it's verse 52, Bishop. 52, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Read it. Um, second Edges 8 and 52. For unto you is paradise opened. The tree of life is planted. The time to come is prepared. Plenteousness is made ready. A city is builded, and rest is allowed. Yea, perfect goodness and wisdom. Read on. The root of evil is sealed up from you. Weakness and the moth is hid from you. And corruption is fled into the hell to be forgotten. No more sin. We don't. Sorrows are past, and in the end is showed the treasure of immortality. And that, that tree of life at the end is going to show the treasure of immortality. So he told Adam now, you have to die. You're going to work and die for your sins. When you hear that, everybody want to get right then. He said, no, no, you can't hold tree of life now. No, you got to take him out. He's out the garden. Let's go back to Genesis. Yes, sir. Genesis 3 and 23. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove him out, so excuse me, so he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Now the the center or the epicenter of the Garden of Eden was Jerusalem. All right? He drove him east. If you look on a map, east would take you towards, well, I don't I'm just going to get the point. It, he ended up with Abraham in the Ur of the Chaldees in Babylon. That's where they ended up. And they came back up with Lot, up to Haran, and back down into Israel. But anyway, he drove him out. That's why you, that's why you find Abraham, where you, all of a sudden, you read about Abraham, he was a Chaldean. That's how he ended up with me. Another class of a time. Then he found the, the ark on the Mount Ararat, which is to the east. Okay, so anyway, 
because of that, Adam, God said, you're going to work and you're going to die for it. And now you have to earn your place back. I'm going to judge your people. I'm going to judge this nation. I'm going to forgive them. It could be reconciliation. But guess what? From then, from that sin, we're here now. You understand that? From that, we're here now. But we could be forgiven. But judgment had to pass. Isaiah 6. Isaiah 6. Yes, sir. Let's start me with verse... Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I. Send me. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. So he said, So when the angel said, So God said, Listen, who's going to go and tell these people? He said, I'll go for you when the angel said. So I want you to go tell them something. This is what I want you to tell them. Go and tell this people, hear indeed, but don't understand. See indeed, but don't perceive what I'm saying. Like, go tell them, but I don't want them to understand what I'm saying. It's like today you're talking to people on the street, and you're like, do you know eating pork is a sin? And they can't perceive and understand that. Do you know Christ is black? They can't perceive and understand that. Haven't all of you experienced talking to somebody, a family member, a friend, and you're reading simple things like Deuteronomy 28, 68, simple to understand, and like, I don't get it. Like, what are you trying to say? Have you ever experienced in camp, I, I was experienced in camp, somebody's asking a question, and when you begin to answer them, watch me, look at my face. So you said this, like, and you start explaining to them, and they're looking at you, but they go far away. You see that, you see their eyes fixing on you, but you could tell their mind is floating away. And you're like, yo, 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 you asked me a question. And you're answering them, and all of a sudden they disconnect. Their brain disconnect from the air and their eyes. And then after you, fi after you finish saying, he said, you got what I said? He said, what's your nationality? I'm African American. I just said it. We just said the children. Let's read that again. And you're like, yo, 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 yo. There might be a point to death. <laughs> I used to always marvel at that. I'm talking like, yo, you just asked. And as soon as you answer, they're like, and I'm not even talking about some people who are combative. They'll go to something else. But you didn't, I just said, you don't understand, it just said, he's black? And they're like, oh, no. No, read it again. Let me tell you, read it again. And read it again, they're like, like they far away. You never experienced that before? Bishop. Yeah. That, that, happened, that happened today at camp. Yeah? We, <laughs> today at camp, brothers know, we read Revelation 1. We asked, who in the earth has woolly hair? It was an older man, 73 years old. He had, he had white hair as well. He said, who had woolly hair in the earth? He said, black, pe black people. We read Christ's description as if it burned in a furnace. That's dark, right? You, you admit it? Yeah, that's dark. I said, what color was Jesus? Well, nobody knows. Whoa. It was bad. It was bad. It was bad. Yo, at that point, sometimes I, I, it's going to sound bad. I'd be discouraged. Like, uh, the next mighty speaker. Somebody can have at this one because I'll be able to go all day. Well, you know, this guy, he, he tried to save the world. I don't clap out. But he's changed a lot over the years. Abiel would, I'm telling you something, this guy, you have you on a mission everywhere. He want to stop and try to, like, Abiel, the dude is 70. He got tattoos. He's, he, he has a Bible like this big in three different languages. He's not going to listen to you, Abiel. I'm telling you. Blood. And he got a blunt. <laughs> And I'll be like, no, no. I'm like, Abiel's is not okay. Maybe he's appointed to death. Did you ever? But anyway, that's so. yeah. Let's bring it to the house. <laughs> anyway, so uh, they they said he said, tell them. I want you to tell them, but I'm not going to make them understand. I don't want them to understand. That's me. Most highs meditate terrors. What did he do that for? Jump back in chapter, uh, what was we just reading? That was six? Yes, sir. Uh, six. Jump back in chapter five, uh, 20. Yes, no, sir. No, no, no. 
Um, we're going to jump around real quick. 5, 13. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. And their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Mm -hmm. Verse 20. Verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good. People in captivity. And good evil. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. 21. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink. What's this? Read which, on. Which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Six and eight. Chapter six, verse eight. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here am I, send me. And he said, go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. God said, listen, I don't want them to understand lest they convert and be healed. This ain't the healing season right now. This ain't the healing season. This is judgment right now. So I want you to go tell them, but you all ain't going to understand nothing because I got a different plan. I'm about to work you. I'm about to kill you. I'm about to destroy you. Because you know why? Because I led you into captivity. You didn't listen. You call evil good. You was wise in your own eyes. Uh, you justified the wicked. But I'm going to send the prophets to you. And some of you are just appointed to die. That's the harsh reality of this Bible. That's why sometimes, Deacon, you something? You got no. thought? Go for yeah, that's why sometimes you hear the bishop talking to people I know who don't understand and don't allow themselves to just put aside the emotion they're feeling. They be thinking that he be coming off the side of his head and he's mean or whatever. He's really trying, it's called shock trauma, trying to make you understand how grave this is. But for us to understand the scriptures, I pray it resonates in our spirit and stop, don't get caught on how he says it, but understand what he's saying. And if you don't get it, maybe it's because God just don't want you to get it. An evil man understand if not judgment. You just, you know, and that's why you just got to, you know what, fold hands, move on next, because you must not be part of this number. And if you are, you'll repent. But no time to sit here with you because you're brain dead. Yeah, go ahead, Deacon. Uh, second Ezra 7. We were just talking about this last night, wasn't we? Second Ezra 7, start at verse 11 real quick. Yes, sir. Second Ezra chapter 11, or excuse me, chapter 7 and verse 11. Concerning why he did it, what he did. Because mm -hmm. Adam could oh, Adam could have repented and everything would have been cool. The Lord was like, nah. Nah, -uh, you got to get this judgment. Go ahead. Because for no, their... No, I'm sorry, quote it again. Second Edris chapter 7, verse 11. Okay, thank you. Because for their sakes I made the world. Uh -huh. And when Adam transgressed when my statutes. When Adam transgressed my statutes, when Adam messed up, come on. Then was decreed that now is done. It was decreed. What was decreed? Judgment. Judgment was decreed. This is what we were going to have to go through now. Read on. Verse 12. Then were the interests of this world made narrow. Made what? Narrow. This is not, this is why we what we experience it right now. I know a lot of y'all are feeling this right now. How narrow it is. It's hard. The trials, the tribulations. It seems like there's, there's no, it doesn't ease up. It don't get no easier. It says then what? Then were the interests of this world made narrow. Come on. Full of sorrow and travail. They are but few and evil. Full of perils and very painful. Full of perils and very painful. Come on. For the interests of the old world, the elder world, excuse me, were made were wide and sure uh -huh. and brought immortal fruit. We had the tree. We had the more. We were, we were gonna live forever. But Adam transgressed. Therefore, the Lord brought judgment. Uh read on. Verse 14. If then they that live labor not to enter these straight and vain things, mm -hmm. they can never. Receive those that are laid up for them. You have to go through the judgment now in order to inherit the things that God promised us, that God's going to give us. Jump down to, uh, where is it at? Uh, condition of the battle. You know 56. what I'm talking about. 56? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Second Edward 756. 
Read. For while we lived and committed iniquity, we consider not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. Come on. Then answered he me and said, this is the condition of the battle. These are the terms of life. This is the condition of the battle. All that we got to go through with the interest is now being made narrow. Before where it was wide and short, and Adam messed up. Now it's made narrow. We got to go through these perils. We got to go through this tribulation. Guess what? These, these are the terms and conditions. A lot of people sit back arguing about the rules. Mad because we got to do this. We got to do that. You ever get somebody, who here play ball? Anybody play basketball? Can you step on the court and be like, well, why I got to dribble? Does that make sense? What do you mean I got to dribble? I don't want to dribble. These are the terms and conditions of life. And if you want to survive, if you want to win, you got to play by the rules. You got to keep these commandments. You got to believe on Christ. This was the judgment given because Adam messed up. That's what Bishop is, is showing you. Very good. Um, where was it at just now? Um, second Corinthians Not before that. Uh, we was at Isaiah 6 and 8. And um, 8 to 10. Right. Watch this. I, I want to go to um, uh, Sirach 22. And that, you know, Deacon was saying right now um, about the condition. And he tells you in the same book, in 7, 7, verse 21. Read that real quick, 2nd Ezra 7, 21. Yes, sir. 2nd Ezra chapter 7 and verse 21. For God have given straight commandments to such as Cain, what they should do to live, even as they came, and what they should observe to avoid punishment. To avoid judgment, what they should do to avoid it. Read on. Nevertheless. Even so he gave it. They were not obedient unto him. So then if they wasn't obedient to him, what do you have to expect? You've got to expect judgment. They were not. Nevertheless, they still didn't listen. So judgment passed. Read on. But spake against him and imagined vain things. Every idle word. Well, let's go to... Uh, to Sirach 22. I'm going to wrap it up and just give me a couple more scriptures. Sirach 22. Watch this. I'm going to deal with friends real quick. Sirach 22, 21. Sirach chapter 22 and verse 21. Though thou drewest a sword at thy friend, yet despair not, for there may be a returning to favor. Right. You might have gotten to a friend, but don't despair not. You might be able to fix that friendship again. You know what? We don't. Verse 22. If thou hast opened thy mouth against thy friend, fear not, for there may be a reconciliation. You might open your mouth against a friend, but don't fear. You know, you might say something that's out of season, but you might be able to fix it. Read on. Except for abrading. Up, oh, but except for this. Read on. Abrading. Or, or pride. You know what abrading is? When you just so disrespectful, you say some stuff that that others out of your mouth that's just so foul that you change the way he views you. Upbraiding or having a spirit of pride where you can't be corrected. Read on. Or disclosing of secrets. Or you disclose personal information. Or a treacherous wound. Or something treacherous you do to that brother, like sleep with his wife. Read on. For, for these things... Every friend will depart. You know, for these things, every friend will depart. Now, if you repent, should a brother forgive you? Huh? Right, he should forgive you. But don't think the friendship going to be the same. Just got to put you in a box over here. Right there, that's your box right here, Shalom. Cool. People think forgiveness means if you go back to, no, that's, that's not what it's talking about. No. It's got to put you in a box. You just came to my house and stole from me. And I caught you. I forgive you. But you're not coming back over. Yeah. Definitely not going to give you my, my ATM card. Came to my house, you recorded me. <laughs> you, you're coming back... You're not coming in, and if you did come in, you won't have hands and a phone. 
No, but you understand what I'm trying to say? There's just certain things you just can't fix. Watch this. Okay, but this is the point now. Uh, Sirach 28. 28, verse 2. Sirach, chapter 28, verse 2. So verse 1. Yes, sir, verse 1. He that revenges shall find vengeance from the Lord, and he shall surely keep his sins in remembrance. Forgive thy neighbor the hurt that he hath done unto thee. By that treacherous wound, read on. So shall thy sins also be forgiven when thou prayest. So you know what? You better learn to forgive. But forgiveness does not mean you forget. It just means you don't deal with him ill. Read on. Verse 3. One man beareth hatred against another. And do it he seek pardon from the Lord? He showeth no mercy to a man which is like himself. Right, because we all fall short. We all have our issues. Read on. And doth he ask forgiveness of his own sins? And we're going to pray to God and we're going to ask forgiveness, don't we? Absolutely. Read on. If he that is but flesh nurse hatred, who will entreat for pardon of his sins? But he that is but flesh nourish hatred, meaning what? You keep that hatred in your spirit. You don't let go of it. It fuels you. You make a provision for it. You, know, you feed that hatred with right here, how you feel, how you think. Read on. Verse 5. If he that is but flesh nurse hatred, who will entreat for pardon of his sins? Remember thy end, and let enmity cease. Remember corruption and death, and abide in the commandments. Read on. Remember the commandments, and bear no malice to thy neighbor. Remember the covenant of the highest. And wink at ignorance. It says, and bear no malice towards your neighbor. But it doesn't mean that things are going to be the same. That doesn't mean that. You just don't deal with him unjustly, ungodly against the scripture. You don't try to render evil for evil, bring harm to him. But that friendship ended. You understand that? And that's what you just got to live with. As you said you had a question you want to ask? Hey, uh, Captain Shemai, uh pose that question again uh, to the men up in here that was put on the 80s page. Now, it's for a lot of brothers that wasn't here last night because uh, the class doing with uh, forgiveness and recu reconciliation of sins. So uh, a couple comes into the truth. They married. It's yeah. a married couple. They're a married couple comes into the truth, and they're in for some months. On the day of atonement, the wife confesses to her husband that she's been banging his friend Raheem. And because it's the day of atonement, she felt the need to come forward and confess. And whew, she feels good now. She got it off her chest. Yeah. What? She was banging them before the truth. Remember, she was banging before the truth. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead, Kevin. She was banging him, banging Ra your friend Raheem before the truth, and now it's the day of atonement, and she feels compelled to get it off her chest and confess it to you. Husbands, what is your response? Any man in here know? One of your new brothers back here. This brother right here. <coughs> brother right there. He's just looking straight ahead. You, yeah, you. You, you. <laughs> Stand up, bro. What is your response? My response is, my response is, uh, what happens to the wife? What happened to the wife? Well, remember, it was before the truth. Yes, sir. Uh, I definitely wouldn't take her back. So, I have to talk to either leadership or... Why you got to talk to leadership? <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, any, okay, so who would take her back? Any brothers? I mean, any brothers? He said he wouldn't take her back. Who would take her back? She could be forgiven. Remember that? Yeah. Yes, sir. But you ain't going to deal with it, though, right? No, sir. So I what about anybody it else? Anybody else? The day of atonement. So you're not forgiving her? I forgive her, but I, you know, I wouldn't go back with her. Okay. Hey, you in the spirit. All praise to the All most high. <laughs> <laughs> now look, I, I'm gonna well, bring out a scripture real quick. Yeah, go for, come on. 
So get Romans chapter 2, verse 12, y'all. Y'all got to understand, man, um, whether you know the law or not, you still going to be judged, just like a lot of our people in Christianity. They doing a lot of stuff ignorantly. They might not even know the law, statutes, and commandments or is laws pertaining to certain things that's written in the Bible. And they doing it ignorantly. But guess what? They can be forgiven for that. But the law still stands, and the judgment still stands. Read that real quick. Romans Ro 2. Romans 2, verse 12. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. So you see that? You'll be perished with, you still will be judged without the law just because you didn't know. Now, what is the law pertaining to a woman laying down uh, that, uh, that commit adultery on her husband? Get that real quick and do number 24. Now, we ain't talking about her being put to death like in the time of Moses. You know what I'm saying? Because we in the truth now. So what, the sacrificial law has been done away with? All manner of sin can be forgiven itself, blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, and we ain't putting people to death for certain type of sins for because uh, Christ came for those sins that you couldn't be forgiven for under the law of Moses. Now you can be forgiven for it. Bestiality for y'all brothers that love touching these damn dogs. Uh, homosexuality. <laughs> Adultery. You can be forgiven for those things. Oh, hey, thank Jesus. Now where we at? <laughs> Do them in 24 real quick. Where you want? Where you want to start? Uh, verse four. Or just? I, was, I just want to get straight to the point. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter twenty-four, verse four. Her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife. After that, she is defiled, for that is an abomination before the Lord. So after she defiled, you found out she been defiled, and y'all married, even if it was before the truth. Guess what? She gotta go. She been defiled. Another man that defiled your wife. You can't be up in here all love it up. I just want to forgive. I just, I just it was before the truth. We didn't know. Oh hell no! A judgment still got to come forth from that. Don't, look, I didn't dealt with at least two or three different brothers who wife was defiled before the truth, and then they come into the truth and it just eats them up in their mind. And guess what happened to them brothers? They are not with us no more. And they still because they still want to hold on to her, and it was a uh, hold on to a defiled wife. They gone, you know what I'm saying? So the, the judgment still stands. Yeah, you can forgive them. Just like the brother said, I'm going to forgive you, but I'm moving on up. <laughs> Watch this. Being that you brought up, let's go to Matthews. Uh, let's go to Romans 7 real quick. We're going to wrap it up after these couple of scriptures. The bishop should be here starting soon, I should say. Um, Romans 7. Uh, Watch this real quick. Um, start with verse 1. The book of Romans, chapter 7 and verse 1. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law have dominion over a man as long as he liveth. Now, notice something. He's writing to those in Rome. These were Israelites that was living like heathens, that was coming into repentance. So he's telling them, listen, the law have dominion over you. Read on. Verse 2. For the woman which have a husband is bound by the law to her husband. So which woman was this talking about? It was about these women and these men that were living like heathen, like how we came up. We came up as heathens. We didn't know the laws of God. He wasn't right to the Hebrews. They already knew that. He's saying, listen, he says, for the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband. You think they knew the laws of God back then like that in Rome, in Corinth? No, they were learning it. And as they came in, it says, you know that you're bound to that man, right, as long as he's alive. Because back then it was easy to get women would just bounce for their man or whatever. He said, no, 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 no. You're bound to that man as long as he liveth. Read on. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of the husband. It says, but if he's dead, you're loose from the law. You're free. But he has to be dead, and you can't kill him. Read on. Verse 3. So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she, she shall be called an adulteress. And these are the ones who were not born under the law. Like all of us here. You came with this woman, she has to understand she's bound to you. And if she goes to another, she's a what? God said that. So what the cap pull in, in Romans 2 stands with or without the law, the law still stands. Read on. 
But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law, from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Though she now gets remarried to another man. So there's no getting around it. Now watch this real quick. Um, so again, that like caps it, you can be forgiven, but judgment still stands. <laughs> it don't change. And the reconciliation in this case is back to God, not to him, based on Deuteronomy 24. Uh, real quick, I'm just, uh, 1 Corinthians, I'm going to wrap it up. 1 Corinthians 7. We always read this, but I want to jump through this chapter real quick and try to show you something real quick. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. You know, I want to read for myself a little bit. I'm going to start with verse 1. Now concerning these things whereof I write unto you, it is good that a man should not touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. So it says, it's good that you be alone, but let the man have a wife to avoid fornication and let a woman have a husband so she can avoid fornication, right? It says, for the wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband, and likewise the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Defrauding not one another except to be for consent of time, that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again, lest Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. It says that neither the man or woman get tempted. So if you two separate, as far as not having, not separate together, but refrain from having sex for fasting and prayer, fine. But it come back together so no, neither one of you start burning and you go fornicate. That's why in chapter 6, it says 6, uh, verse 18. Flee fornication. Every man sin, uh, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Because the sin is against yourself. Judgment is going to hit you. So back to uh, Corinthians 7. I want to jump on down to verse 9. Now you can read for me. Yes, sir. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9. No, verse 8. Verse 8. I, I say therefore to the unmarried and widows... It is good for them if they abide even as I. But if they cannot contain, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn. So it's contain meaning that it's better to not marry so you could be attended to the law. But if you can't contain to avoid fornication, it says what? It's better to marry than to burn. Read on. Verse 10. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. And not the wife depart from her husband. Says wife, don't depart from your husband. Read on. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. Right, it says, if a wife departs, she has, she has to leave. There's problems in the marriage. But remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. Why? To flee fornication. Reconcile. Don't use that sex as a tool to get back. Don't, tell, don't say, uh, he, you know, he ain't in the truth. You was with him in the world. Now, let's, well, let's see what this chapter says. I don't want to say it yet. Uh, read on. Yes, sir. Verse 12. But to the rest speak I, not, not the Lord. If any brother have a wife that believe him not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which hath an husband that believe not, that believe him not, and if she be pleased to dwell with, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. So now, wait a second. It says you have a husband or wife that don't believe. It says do not leave them if they be pleased to dwell with. The pleased to dwell with is what? When you was with them in the world, they were taking care of you, was paying your paying the bills, you two was having sex. Now that you came to this truth. He don't believe or she don't believe. It said, don't get rid of them now. That pleased to dwell with, we know that you want to win them over to Christ. But that pleased to dwell with meaning they handle their business like they've been doing. You was in the world with him. If you was in the world with him, don't now come to truth and think you're going to get rid of him because he's not keeping the commandments with you. No. No. He was pleased to dwell with them. You all had a good relationship, whatever it was. Now, if you are applying these commandments, and he's not, sisters, you still owe him due benevolence. 
and hopefully you can win him over. And if his spirit is repulsed by the words of God, he's eventually going to leave. He's going to leave. But don't use it as the way to get out of a relationship. Because we read in Romans, it says, you're bound to him as long as he liveth. Now, you could go ahead and leave if you want to, but there is a judgment. Now, who want to gamble with that? You could be forgiven. There could be reconciliation with God, but don't think the judgment is not going to pass. And because judgment is not executed speedily, I forgot the rest of it, but you know what it means. Meet people are wise to do evil, right? It's fully said in the hearts of men to do evil. Right, it's said in the hearts of men to do evil. Because it ain't past speed, don't, but do not confuse yourself and think there won't be a judgment. And in that day, there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Hope you all understand that. All right. Uh, Matthew's 19, and I'm going to wrap it up. Two more scriptures. Matthew 19, and I want verse 9. Matthew chapter 19, verse 9. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her which is put away, doth commit adultery. Now, whichever you brothers try to put away your wife for any reason except fornication, you commit adultery. And if she goes sleep with somebody else because you put her away and you ain't having sex with her and you left her alone, you are guilty of her, her fornication also, her adultery. You understand that, right? So we can't deal ill with them either. We don't, we're not absolved from that. Now watch what it says. We don't. Verse 10. His disciples say unto him, if the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. So the disciples said, so Christ, so wait a second. Moses said, Deuteronomy 24, he said, listen, in the beginning it was not so. He said, you can't put away your wife for no reason other than fornication. So what you're saying, she got to sleep with somebody for me to put her away? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. So you're saying she could be a full-blown demon, but she just got to be virtuous down there. Up here, she could be a straight, she celebrate, but, but down there, she's just, she, ain't, she ain't a hoe. Well, then... Maybe it's better not to get married then. That's how the apostles, they was conflicted. Yo, damn, I can't get rid of this broad for nothing? No, you can't. No, you can't. They said, well, then, I don't want to use the word. Then it don't add, the JJ just ain't worth it because I'm stuck. What do you say next? Verse 11. But he said unto them, all men cannot receive this saying. They was contemplating saying, yo, I don't think the sex is worth getting trapped up with some of these women. Christ said, listen, all men don't have that spirit. To avoid fornication, you're going to take a wife, and you're going to have troubles in the flesh. But don't try to get rid of her. Cyborg, I'm telling you, marriage is the biggest guess you're going to make in your life. The children are born to you. Your parents are given to you. Who you choose as a spouse is a direct reflection of who you are. So, sisters, before you open your knees, you better make sure what you're doing because, ooh, you do not want to wake up and look up that nigga and say, I can't stand his guts. Mm. 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 Okay. Real quick, two more scripts. <laughs> A second Ezra's one. One more scripture. 125. 125. And if you do, 125. Yes, sir. Second Edges chapter 1, verse 25. Seeing ye have forsaken me, I will forsake you also. God says, seeing that you have forsaken me, I will forsake you also. You know? When ye desire me to be gracious unto you, I shall have no mercy upon you. God said, you. nah. Nah, you want me to be gracious to you? I'm going to have no mercy on you. You forsook what I said. You know that I'm a God that should not lie and I don't repent. I'm telling you what I'm going to do. Don't play with me. Now you want me to be gracious to you? God said, I'm going to have no mercy. Read on. Verse 26. Whensoever you, call upon, whensoever you shall call upon me, I will not hear you, for ye have defiled your hands with blood, 
and your feet are swift to commit manslaughter. Ye have not, at, ye have not as it were, forsaken me, but your own selves, said, saith the Lord. He said, you forsook your own selves. You sin, and you think now you can call me. I can't hear you. Don't want to hear you. What is he saying? Time for judgment. All right, so I pray you all receive something with that, and that uh, you all meditate on these scriptures and apply them in your life. May the Most High in Christ bless you abundantly, and if you hate God, ooh, judgment. Those online, stay tuned. Bishop will be on in a few minutes, all right? We offline?